morning. I'd like to see how we restored uh, this old tiny chest. We think it's about 100 years old. Stay tuned, because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning, and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 231, the 30, uh, 23rd edition of uh, our fifth year. Today we're going to restore this uh, this old uh, wooden storage chest. I don't know a whole lot about it except it uh, appears to be pretty old. My, uh, I got a friend who works in a uh, recycling place and this came through and he rescued it. Um, he's rescued other projects for me. Uh, that old uh, military green military desk we did. Uh, the banker's chair he uh, rescued and I fixed up. Now we got this old chest. I don't know exactly what we're going to do with it, but we're going to take a look at it and assess it, come up with a plan, and execute. But we're not going to get any executing done unless we do what? That's right. We need to knock off the chit-chat and get to work. I got my old uh, carpenter's toolbox back. Uh, the one we made a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was really too wide to carry. I, I think I mentioned that when I built it. It looked real good. Uh, so I showed it to my wife and she liked the heck out of it. So I said I'd trade her. So I took back this one, which is, we learned something about Carpenter's toolboxes. The reason they're narrow is so that when you pick them up, uh, they're not banging into your leg here. So anyway, we got this back. The box is uh, 16 inches deep, uh, 14 inches tall, and 35 inches wide. It's made out of uh, solid poplar in single boards. Let me uh, show you. The reason I think this could be an antique, that is, it could be dated to the uh, very early 20th century, is that these wide boards you know this this board is probably started out it's it's about 15 inches now um, but it probably started out about 18 inches you can't even get boards like that anymore um, this was cut out of a single piece of tree you can see it was plain sawn you got a quarter sawn down uh, rings here quarter sawn rings up here and then the heartwood is has got the uh, plain plain saw pattern and one of the reasons this thing has lasted so long is that it was put together with hand cut dovetails but here's a mystery see that line right there you just I got you zoomed in there's a faint line right through there when you cut these dovetails you measure you put your piece of wood on there and then you take a knife and you score a line down through there so what they've done is after they put these dovetails in they never sanded that line away so I think that's interesting okay uh, one of the many of the problems we have to deal with is this solid piece of wood here it's got a crack it goes all the way through and it's about three quarters of the way down and then there's another smaller crack here so we're gonna have to deal with that in some way um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and sand some of this ugly uh, pink paint off and take a look at some of the wood I moved the project over here on the assembly table so I get better light and access <laughs> It's definitely poplar. See how greenish yellow that, uh, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but it, it's, almost, uh, it's almost green, which tells me, the fact that this is poplar tells me that maybe this thing was originally painted. And that would also explain why they left this score line in here on these uh, hand cut dovetail joints. Figure it's going to be painted anyway. Here's another mystery. 
Uh, look at here, the trim doesn't fit. This trim's about a quarter of an inch too short. Now you'd think that a guy who could cut these uh, hand cut uh, dovetails here could cut trim to fit. Let's investigate that. And the answer is, at some time after this thing was built, uh, the trim broke off right here and it was uh, pieced back together. And when they pieced it back together, uh, they shortened it by about a quarter of an inch. Now it appears that our piece was originally painted. See this dark, uh, this dark color in here? Well, I'm going to have to take back my theory about it being painted because this definitely looks like it was finished with some kind of a light, some kind of light finish on the inside. Now this is another uh, reason I think this could be 75 or 100 years old. It's got these square uh, cut nails. Now, they still have cut nails today, but they're kind of specialty items. And this thing was built with them. They're all over the bottom. Here's another one here. It's, you can see the size of it. Look at the size of my finger. Those are like, you know, horseshoe nails, practically. And again, this bottom is one continuous board. It's, it hasn't been joined together. It's one 16-inch wide poplar board. Another reason you can tell that this is old is because this wood right here, this solid wood, is an inch thick, finished. On modern wood, they cut it an inch thick, and then they uh, mill it down to three quarters. And even a five-quarter board, so that means this thing had to be milled down when this was originally cut, it was five quarter, and then it was planed down to an inch. I don't like to use paint stripper unless I have to, um, but this paint turns out to be a lot, uh, a lot tougher than I thought. So I'll uh, put this paint stripper on here, and then we'll come back and see if it works on this paint. Well, dilemma time. Uh, you know, the reason I'm making a big deal about finding out what color it was originally is because when you restore something, you kind of want to put it back to its original color. But it's a dilemma because I don't like that dark stain. I'm going to have to fix this lid. So I'm going to take this... Uh, I'm taking the trim off. I'll go ahead and take this trim off and I'll show you the nails they were using a lot of it. What I want to show you <coughs> about this trim, this trim was put on with these giant uh, cut nails. Did you ever see anything like that? nails. That was the trim. Here's a, <clears throat> something I've never seen before. In each one of these pins on the dovetails, they have, before they put the thing together, they cut a slot in the pin and then once they got it assembled, they drove wedges into the uh, into the pin. You know, somebody's going to tell me, hey, that's real common. I've never seen it before. I haven't finished sanding this thing down yet, but I've got to do some work on this top. Um, it's cracked in two places. I'm going to have to uh, section a couple, sister a couple of pieces in there. So, before I take it off, I might as well show you the problem. See how this uh, board's not laying flat anymore? 
That's because the board is split right down the middle. And it's bulging up. Now here's a <clears throat> takeaway about getting these uh, old timey screws out. You put you you can strip these slots out real it's just a standard screwdriver. You want to put it in that slot and then you tap it. Now you don't move it. You, you want to keep it exactly where you drove it in and then very carefully turn it. That's the best grip you're ever going to get on that screw that very first time. If you can see it, and here's another takeaway on these uh, screws. What they've done is they've used these big screws, but they cut the ends of them off so they wouldn't go through all the way on the wood. So, and I find this also uh, one of the ways you can tell. If you have old, something old, see how that screw head is not centered? You find that a lot on uh, some of these old screws. Look how badly that thing's worked. We're going to have to get radical on this thing, I think. Here are two cracks. This is the, the biggest crack. It goes about three quarters of the way through. You can see it flexing there. And we've got another crack right here. It goes about halfway. What I'm going to do this is really radical. I'm going to I'm going to put it on a table saw and cut the board right through there. And same thing here. Well, wish me luck on this. I I'm about 50-50 confident it'll work, but okay. I cut down the first crack, and those will go back together just like that. Now I'm going to cut down that crack right there. Okay, there you can see the crack. You can see where I got my saw lined up. Let's give this plan a try. That's great, Memphis, but what do you do about the original crack? Well, in the other, in the small board over there, I think I pretty much cut it out. But in this one, it, here's the crack now right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it apart. It's got wood filler in it. Take some of that wood filler out. I'm just going to spread it apart and glue it back together. Putting uh, four biscuits in every joint because remember our problem was with alignment and that's one of the main things uh, biscuits do is not so much for strength but for alignment. Make sure we get 
got that warp out of there. I mean this. I mean this could, could uh, dry straight and then warp as soon as you as soon as you take the clamps off. But we'll do everything we can. Here's another takeaway, and this is something you can do even if you don't have a lot of tools. Don't forget, uh, you know, using a you know a, a 110 drill with one of these sticky pads on there. I use this all the time, even for carving. For example, here where that stain's got into the end grain, um, I can't get that out with a random orbit but this thing will cut it. The downside to using that uh, 110 drill and the sticky pad is it creates a lot of dust and you really should unless you want to uh, gag and cough like I do all the time uh, you need to wear dust protection now my random orbit I got a uh, vacuum hooked up to it cedar. Yep, I said cedar. I think this thing is made out of cedar. So the question is, what do you do when your cedar doesn't smell like cedar anymore? And the answer is, you buy some of this stuff called cedar oil and you spread it around on your cedar and it restores the uh, aroma. Couldn't find any uh, cedar stain uh, for the outside, so I just used oak. Uh, I used cedar oil on the inside. Uh, let's let this dry a little bit and put some polyurethane on it. Well, I got the lid on it. Tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll put some polyurethane on it. And we'll look at it all shined up. Sassafras. Do you think this is sassafras? When I cut into that wood, I smelled you know, something aromatic. Could have been sassafras. Now, sassafras is pretty expensive these days. I mean, it's so expensive to make, you know, pen, ink pens out of it. Well, hopefully somebody in the comments will be able to tell us what kind of wood this is. Uh, my guess is cedar, but don't expect me to defend my position real close, because I don't know. Well, here's our old-time antique cedar chest for Memphis Monday 231. But a lid, I was able to, uh, was able to save the hardware, finish the inside with cedar oil, and the outside with oak stain and uh, polyurethane. Well, that does it for another Memphis Money, Memphis Money 231, the uh, 23rd video of year five. Today we restored an ugly uh, pink chest. Uh, I think it's some old-timey cedar. Uh, the 
the problem is it doesn't have, it looks like cedar, feels like cedar, smells like cedar, but it doesn't have any knots in it. Uh, another thing could be is sassafras, but there are some other uh, old-timey trees like elm and, uh, you know, an ash and some other, this is an ash, uh, that are no longer uh, commercially available. So if you know what kind of wood this is, uh, speak up and don't expect me to defend my position because I don't know. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. But I think we've got a lot of takeaways. Uh, we, we found those little wedges in the uh, pins on the uh, dovetails. We uh, learned how to flatten a warp board by cutting it lengthwise and gluing it back together. Uh, so I think we got uh, I think we got our money's worth. So like and favorite, share and comment, and all the stuff you know on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.